If I were to sit you down and ask you what you think the single best quality is in order to win Big Brother, what would you say? If you've only been watching for a few years, you might be inclined to say strength, and it'd be hard to argue with you given the winners that have been produced over the past few years. If you consider yourself a Big Brother historian, you may say something like persuasion, a mind filled with strategic acumen, or something else along those lines, as those are some of the main qualities that some of the legends of the game have. But for me, I'd choose something a little bit different. I'd choose something that many people might be annoyed with if they possess it. For me, I choose underestimation. Being underestimated in a game like Big Brother opens the door for you to pull the rug right out from under your biggest opposition. And if you play your cards right, being underestimated can be your golden ticket to finale night. It's a tricky hand to play, don't get me wrong, but every once in a while we get a player who capitalizes on being underestimated. It's a perfect way to avoid having a big fat bullseye on you throughout the season while also allowing you to progress and make small moves behind the scenes. To me, one of the greatest examples of an underestimated player is Nicole Franzel, one of the most talked about players of all time. It's an understatement to say that Nicole is a polarizing subject within the community. Some root for her downfall while others firmly stand behind her ready to defend any incoming insults thrown her way. But for all the conversation that surrounds Nicole, it's a bit surprising that her BB-18 game is, for the most part, misunderstood. It seems that a large majority of BB watchers don't quite know how to formulate Nicole's winning game, so it is now my goal to try and change that. Today, we'll be traveling back to 2016 where we saw a young woman get another shot at playing Big Brother. She came into the game better prepared, and through her social maneuvering and S-tier positioning, we saw her beat the odds to make it to the end as an underdog and take the crown. This is the story of how Nicole Franzel won Big Brother 18. <laughs> When BB-18 was revealed and rumored to have four returning players in a similar vein to Big Brother 14, the speculation for who these players would be went rampant. Last time we saw two former winners, the face of Big Brother in Janelle, and an all-time great character return as coaches. So how could the producers top that? To put it simply, they couldn't. Because instead, this time we got three 7th place players and a 16th placer as our returners. A pretty underwhelming assortment of choices when we were given four legends the last time, but who knows? Maybe having four more normal leveled players would cause a different and potentially more interesting dynamic than what BB14 gave us. Among the returners, we had Frank Udy from BB14, who was most known for either winning a competition or being on the block every single week in his season. We also had both James Hewling and Davon Rogers from Big Brother 17, and while neither were real big game players, Davon made a huge splash in the few weeks that she was in the house, and James was a huge hit with the casual audience through his pranks that he played on the other house guests. And to round out our last returning player, we had Nicole Franzel. Nicole first played Big Brother back in BB16, where she was portrayed as the sweet, quiet, and cute small-town nerdy girl. She showed that she had some chops for the game, but ultimately was never in a majority alliance and was taken out in seventh place. She was never shown to be ruthless or a liar or anything that would harm her perception on a return, and overall, I feel that all of this really diminished Nicole's threat level. You have got to be kidding me. Of course, Nicole from my brother seasons on the show. Cody got close with her in his season, sent a packing. She could 100% take that out on me. Thank you very much, bro. Upon entering the house, the house guests were divided into four different teams that were decided upon by a schoolyard pick led by the four returning players. These teams would play throughout the first few rounds of the game, and Nicole's team, the Freakazoids, consisted of herself, the tall baseball coach Corey Brooks, the high school teacher Tiffany Russo, who was the sister of BB17's Vanessa, and the token old house guest with Glenn Garcia. On the first two nights, there was a series of three competitions, and the team that won each comp would be safe from the first eviction. But unfortunately for Nicole, her team lost all three comps, which resulted in her team going into a fourth and final sudden death round. All of Team Freakazoid was to compete in an individual challenge, with the last person to finish being immediately evicted from the game. Not the greatest spot to be in, but the bright side was that of the three players that survived the comp, one of them would go on to become the first HOH of the summer. With all the pressure in the world, Nicole went out and crushed it, being the first to finish the comp and guarantee that she would not be the first evicted. Yes! 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 
Tiffany finished soon after her, and in a close photo finish, Corey just managed to edge out Glenn, resulting in Glenn being evicted first. Glenn going over Corey was astronomically good for Nicole's game, as Corey soon became not just her ride or die, but her shield and connection to other players for Nicole throughout basically the entire game. After the comp ended and they had to decide amongst themselves who would become HOH, Nicole expertly handled the situation by convincing Corey and Tiffany to give her the HOH while making it seem like she didn't really want it, which both displayed loyalty to the other returning players as Nicole would go on to protect them throughout the first week, and then also displayed her ability to manage her perception in the eyes of the others as she didn't come across like she was trying to game the players on her team into giving her the HOH, even though that's exactly what she did. But at this point, I need Corey and Tiffany to think that I don't want the HOH because I kind of do. So you want me to do it? All right, Team Freakazoids. Have you come to a decision? I swear. Yeah. Yes. Who will be the first head of household of the summer? So now, being the first HOH of the summer, Nicole found herself in an extremely good position. She was in a majority alliance right off the rip called the 8-pack, which was four returning players as well as Corey, Tiffany, Michelle, and Zakia. One day at the core, call it 8-pack. 8-pack. Hey, okay, I like that. I like 8-pack. I do like 8-pack. Yeah. Within this alliance, the five women also formed an alliance called the Fatal Five, which was just an added layer of protection within this mighty power structure. Jose, Paul, and Victor had already made it clear that they were anti-vet, which made them easy targets for Nicole, with Jose being the standout target of the bunch. Nicole wanted to nominate a pawn next to Jose, though, and not wanting to get any additional blood on her hand, she was able to convince Corey's buddy, Pauly, the brother of Cody from Big Brother 16, Nicole's original season, to volunteer to go on the block in a really expertly handled and underrated way. She got no bad blood through the move, Polly was okay with it and with working with Nicole moving forward, and she was able to appease all of the members of her 8-pack alliance by not using any of them as pawns. So I'm thinking about putting Polly up on the block as a pawn to ensure that Jose goes home this week, but I definitely need to see where Polly's head's at because I don't want to alienate somebody I could potentially work with all season. Could you go to Batman? Could go to bat. The week ended up going smoothly for Nicole as Jose's delusions hammered it in that he was going to go home, and Jose was evicted at the end of the week. Nicole's positioning that she put herself into during her HOH week solidified her spot in the house for many of the upcoming weeks, which is a testament to how winning the first HOH and taking advantage of the infantile, unstructured nature of the house can set you up to be in a golden position for many weeks to come, which is what Nicole had accomplished pretty well. At the start of week two, Polly had won the HOH and had easy targets in the four people that voted to evict in the prior week, meaning that Nicole didn't have anything to worry about and she could instead focus on strengthening her bonds with the other players in the house, particularly Corey, whom she had begun a romantic relationship with. Now, showmances can oftentimes be a bad thing for your game, but for Nicole, it was anything but bad. Corey was always viewed as a bigger threat than Nicole and would be targeted over her if they were ever on the block together, and Corey had a very close connection to Paulie, who would quickly become the most powerful player in the house. Paulie won the veto in week two as well and went through with his plan to backdoor Victor, which was great for Nicole as they were on opposing sides. It was around this time that cracks in the eight-pack alliance started to form though, as Frank, Devon, and Tiffany were all gearing up for war against one another, but at the time being, Nicole was still in good graces with all of the fracturing sides of the alliance, although soon even this would begin to crumble. One thing we have to worry about is Tiffany blowing up our alliance. Let's kind of have a little talk with Polly. You know, just FYI, this alliance was formed, you know, bring him into the fold. Frank wants to tell Polly all about the eight pack, and if Frank gives you an idea, you basically have to agree with it. Otherwise, you'll get in this big debate. So I'm just kind of like, yeah, that's fine. In week three, Bridget won HOH and considered targeting Nicole and Corey, but Frank, who was close allies with Bridget, wanted to try and remain loyal to them and redirected Bridget into targeting Tiffany and Paul. I'm thinking of nominating Corey and Nicole because they could be some kind of a power couple on the same team. Or on the other hand, I could put up Tiffany. She's been really shady. She's also coming after Frank. 
Bronte ended up on the block as well as the third nominee due to the roadkill comp that had been playing out the prior weeks. And although Frank publicly wanted Tiffany gone, Nicole, along with some of the other women, formulated a plan to keep Tiffany and send Bronte home instead so that Tiffany would eventually target Frank in the future. During this time, however, Nicole did a lot of playing both sides between Frank and Devon, which eventually got back to Devon and started creating initial cracks between the two women. Tiffany's going home this week, and she was a member of the 8-pack. The thing is, the 8-pack has kind of served its purpose. All the big targets are out from the other side of the house. Now it's time to start shooting some ducks on my side of the pond. I know who you're thinking. Oh, I'm thinking. I know who you're thinking. Who? It's a returning. You? No. Male or female? Fee. It's very clear to me that Frank is after Davon and Davon is after Frank. I'm working with both of these people and I think that they both trust me. And this week I'm going to have to figure out which one I'm going to stick with more. After Bronte was evicted, Frank was pretty much going to be the target for many players. But Pauly won HOH again, and since he was on Frank's team, Frank was immune once more. Nicole was almost in a tricky spot as Tiffany won the roadkill comp and started working alongside Frank, and Tiffany took a shot at Nicole's structure by nominating Corey. Although it didn't really matter because Corey then went on to win the veto and earn his safety. Nicole very much would be the easy player to go up in Corey's place as they were a public duo, but Nicole put in the work with Tiffany and was able to convince her to nominate Devon instead. None of this really mattered as Tiffany was unanimously evicted anyways, but it's another strong showing on Nicole's part that she was able to avoid being nominated by Tiffany and was able to convince her to not go with the easy route and nominate her and instead nominate Devon, which showed some pretty solid survival skills skills. Ultimately, this would soon come to semi-bite her in the butt and potentially could have set her game astray, but I'm getting ahead of myself. After Tiffany was evicted, Victor re-entered the game and an endurance HOH began. James was ultimately able to pull this one out, which is really good for Nicole on paper because she had a great relationship with James up to this point, and they were aligned, but during the HOH, it was outed by Frank that Nicole targeted Dave on the prior week and was part of the reason that Tiffany nominated her as the replacement for Corey, which ultimately severed Nicole's and Dave on's game relationship. But this is what I don't understand because I told you that that was the plan. I know, but you know, listen, you want to know why? Because somebody told us an hour before this competition that you said you wanted me out before Vic. My wife? Well, I'll tell you what, you tell me who told you that information, I'll give it to her. we came out here apparently nicole you ran to him and told him that i wanted him gone before vic out of this house no i didn't say that oh you didn't say that bridget was right in there this week itself was fairly easy for nicole though as frank was finally not immune and was evicted at the end of the week which finally brings us to the jury stage of the game up until this point, Nicole had been sitting mostly comfortable throughout the season due to her own positioning, but it wasn't perfectly smooth. Her majority alliance had broken up and had turned on one another, and she was almost nominated the prior week. But through her quiet and subtle work on the player, she had remained for the most part unscathed. She had worked with both sides of the fracturing alliance and even displayed levels of control by convincing a group to keep Tiffany and send Bronte home, but because things were extremely messy in this group, word eventually spread around and Nicole had to face some repercussions of her gameplay Play, which led to her being a target of Devon's after this point. But overall, I'm not going to be too negative on this because basically everyone in that initial 8-pack alliance faced varying amounts of repercussions and backlash from the events that had taken place. And Nicole was one of the few who managed to stay off the block for the entirety of it, and she was still firmly aligned with Polly, who was basically the king of the house. The thing about Nicole is that she was really under the radar for the initial part of the game. She was never the face of her alliance, the kingpin, or the biggest target. She was on the down low and was just very actively aligning and strengthening her relationships with the big power players, namely Corey and Pauly, but also forming new powerful bonds with Victor and Paul, and as we saw, both Frank and Devon while they were at war with one another, although that one would eventually unravel and come to bite her. Overall, Nicole was like an edge piece in a puzzle. She's not the cornerstone keeping everything together, she's not the main part of the puzzle that's the real meat and potatoes of everything, but she's a solid enough piece that's still well connected and critical to building the bigger picture. Even with her fragile big alliances breaking apart early on in the game, you could argue that Nicole was still in one of the best positions in the house, although the likes of Polly and the Natalie and James duo may have had slightly more equity at the time. 
Oh, I get goosebumps right now. Week six was the week that everything could have changed, though. As, like I said, Devon started to actively target Nicole, and Devon had quite a few numbers behind her to get it done. One of whom was Michelle, who around this time started developing a bit of a rivalry with Nicole. Although I don't feel that Nicole was going to be in true danger if any of her opponents won HOH in week 6, as she would likely be nominated next to Corey, who would be evicted over her, it's not an ideal position to lose your closest ally and strongest shield right at the start of jury. Luckily for Nicole, Paul went on to win the week 6 HOH, and since Nicole had started to grow a really good relationship with Paul over the past few weeks, she had successfully dodged another major bullet. Even with Nicole getting lucky with the HOH outcome, she still misplaced this a bit as Paul was looking for a pawn to put up next to Bridget, and Nicole volunteered herself. If you think I'm strong, fine. That's a solid answer. I'm not the best at comps, but... Don't volunteer to be a pawn. I just freaking volunteered to be a pawn, and... I wish I could take those words back. Luckily, both Polly and Corey stepped up and volunteered to be the Paul in Nicole's place, in which Paul ultimately landed on Polly. Although it wasn't ideal for Nicole to be volunteering to go on the block during a time where at least three of the people not on the block could be convinced to vote against her, it's another testament to her game that her loyalty to those that she was closest with, namely Polly and Corey, put her in a position where both were more than willing to return that loyalty by stepping up to be a pawn in her place, which shows extremely good positioning within her core structure. After Polly went up as a pawn and won the veto, Devon would eventually become the backdoor target for the week, which was immeasurably good for Nicole, as Devon was a power player at the time who was actively targeting Nicole. Devon would eventually get evicted at the end of the week and become the first member of the jury, but this doesn't yet mean that Nicole is in the clear, as Michelle, Bridget, and even Zakia to an extent were still willing to target Nicole, although their numbers were starting to dwindle. But... I'll be honest with you, I just didn't want her going out with no books. No, she's, she has two She guarantees. has two solid. After Devon was evicted, Victor became HOH, which was another lucky break for Nicole as they had a good relationship and Victor was wanting to target Michelle, who was very actively on the opposing side of Nicole. However, through no fault of Nicole's, things went a little bit south as James received the power to cancel two eviction votes and Natalie went to work on James and she was eventually able to convince him to use his power to try and save Michelle and instead send home Zakia, Paulie's showman's in somewhat of a distant number for Nicole by proxy. By using his power, James flipped from the side of Nicole, Corey, and Polly and gave a majority to the other side, consisting now of James, Natalie, Michelle, and Bridget, and when Zakia was evicted in a 3-2 vote, it was the first time all season that Nicole wasn't in the majority. I know she's staying, but I, I'm voting to evict Meech. This right here was probably the most precarious spot Nicole had been in all season, as it was basically a split house going into the double eviction. And although Nicole had about a 0% chance of getting evicted, there was a pretty good shot of one of her power player allies and shields being evicted if anyone on the other side won power, which would be a big hit for her game moving forward. I don't fault Nicole too much for this though, as this was the result of James getting a fan vote and Natalie and Bridget expertly capitalizing on Paulie's new shitty behavior to flip things on Paulie, in which Nicole was an unfortunate benefactor or an unbenefactor as a result. Nicole, however, caught another huge lucky break when Corey dominated the double eviction by winning both the HOH and Veto, where he was able to squash any momentum the other side had by sending Bridget home and leaving Big Meech a mess as she thought she was getting evicted in both rounds of the double and was clearly very overwhelmed. It's like the second time I've gotten blindsided in a week. <laughs> Sorry, Michelle, things happen. I'm sorry I said that. It's just like it sounded like you wanted to make a deal with me. I wanted to, did it, but I didn't make a deal with you. This I just was asking if you are going to put me up if you won double. So that way I know if I won double, who I'd put up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Call me out and say I, I, made it. I, I didn't make a deal. I, I said that. Although I did say that it was lucky for Nicole that her allies kept winning the HOH, it's also a strategy of hers to align with these beasts of players who are very clearly going to be favored to win all of these comps, as Polly and Corey were both excellent competitors, so it's not exactly all luck here and can instead be viewed as Nicole putting herself in positions where she has more favorable odds that an ally of hers will win a comp and take out those that are against her, so I'm leaning to thinking that this is a positive towards her game. 
After Bridget left at the end of the double eviction, Victor wins HOH again, and although Victor had a good relationship with Nicole, he decided it was finally time to get his revenge on Polly, who evicted him all the way back in week two. Nicole was granted the safety suit through the care package and received safety throughout the week and got to wear a fun traffic cone costume to go with it. They just Nicole! Oh. With this power, you'll be safe from everything. Thanks to a super safety costume. Oh. Getting this safety was definitely a good thing for Nicole as Victor nominated Polly and Corey together, with Nicole being the likely replacement had either won the veto. But Nicole was almost assuredly going to be safe as a replacement nominee regardless of who she was next to anyways, so the safety was nothing more than an additional safety net. Albeit unnecessary as Victor then won the veto as well and didn't use it. Who wants to see my Patriot sword? I do, Corey. Hey everybody! Check out my Patriot card. Super fitting to his body. He has a good chest. I told myself that I would come in here and be emotionless. <laughs> oh, Polly. Can I give you a hug? Sure. <laughs> On paper, it seems that Nicole losing her number two ally in Polly is not a good thing, and in the short term, it wasn't ideal, but it ended up being really good for Nicole in the long term. Shields are only useful for so long in Big Brother, and Polly's main use as a shield for Nicole was so that he would take the hit over herself and Corey whenever someone targeted that trio. So Polly's usefulness as a shield ended up working exactly as intended, although I have to say that the way it went down is a flaw in Nicole's game. She was never going to take the shot at Polly and was reliant on someone else needing to do it. She recognized that Polly was the biggest threat left in the game, but she was too loyal to him and didn't have it in her to ever cut him. So needing to rely on someone else to take the shot at him is a bit of a flaw in her game. Losing Polly in the short term did suck for Nicole, but him leaving would allow the duo of Corey and Nicole to become free from the dark cloud that Polly had become and would give them the freedom to reintegrate within the house structure and become power players of their own. So even though this displayed a bit of weakness in Nicole's game as a whole, after Polly was evicted in 8th place, Nicole's game takes a major leap in quality and now begins a multi-week stretch of really impressive gameplay from her. I just feel at this point like Corey and I are guilty by association because we like talk to Polly. Just like sucks. As it stood, the house looked like this. Natalie, James, and Michelle were a trio that now seemingly had the duo of Victor and Paul working on their side, leaving Nicole and Corey on the outs as Polly was about to be evicted. Nicole and Corey each started using some of their social ties that they still had on the other side to slowly and carefully begin an attempt at reconstructing the house after Polly would leave. The day of Polly's eviction, Nicole pulled Natalie aside and made a pretty spectacular bluff by saying that Paul had been telling her side that James was going to nominate Corey if given the chance. This was not something that Nicole knew, but it was in fact true, and Natalie's facial reaction gave it away that Nicole had successfully bluffed the jackpot. James really had said that he was going to nominate Corey, and this made it look like Paul had betrayed Natalie and James and was playing both sides. Natalie was already hesitant on Paul as she thought that Paul was becoming the new Paulie, and this further pushed the narrative for Natalie. You know, we have to go after James. That's what Paul said he was gonna do. I'm not gonna come after you, too. I feel super betrayed by Paul for throwing James under the bus. Paul, just to be clear, I mean, if you're coming after James, you're coming after me. And now, I'm coming after you. After Polly was evicted, Natalie won HOH, and all of the work Nicole had just done with Natalie proved to be brilliant, as Natalie and James were now considering targeting Paul and Victor as opposed to Nicole and Corey. Michelle received the care package for the week, and through this became a joint HOH with Natalie, which on paper sounds awful for Nicole's game. She had just done such magnificent work flipping Natalie back to her side, and now Nicole's biggest rival slash enemy in the game just became half of the power. But, in actuality, this ended up being extremely good for Nicole. 
Michelle could no longer play in the next week's HOH, and Michelle just lost her vote for the week, meaning that Michelle actually lost a lot of power by becoming the joint HOH. Nicole continued working on Natalie and flipping her against Paul and Victor, and she did such a good job that once Michelle became the joint HOH, Natalie herself began working extremely hard on Michelle, trying to convince her not to nominate Nicole and instead go with the Paul and Victor plan, which Michelle eventually agreed to. If you don't take out the strongest duo, they will win. Paul and Victor are 13, each other to final two. I have nominated you, Victor. I have nominated you, Paul. After Paul and Victor were nominated, Paul won the veto and Michelle chose to replace Paul with Corey instead of Nicole. And although the circumstances as to why Corey was nominated as opposed to Nicole are a bit childish, apparently it was done to spite Nicole's expectations or something like that, it continues the narrative of Corey being an excellent shield for Nicole as this was now the third time that she could have been nominated, yet Corey was nominated in her place instead. Keep in mind that Nicole has still yet to be nominated a single time this season. The work Nicole and Corey had done throughout the week on Natalie and James proved once more to be extremely important to their success, as James was the deciding vote on sending home either Corey or Victor. However, Natalie realized through the week that she had been outplayed and was secretly wanting to flip things on them and have James evict Corey over Victor, to which James said no. James was pretty steadfast all throughout the week on wanting to keep Corey, much to Natalie's dismay, and in a fight between Natalie and Paul, James had let it slip in front of Nicole that if Natalie had her way, Corey would be the one evicted. This exposed that Natalie's loyalty had flipped back to Paul and Victor, which was a big red flag to Nicole and made her realize that she needed to secretly get to work on Paul and flip them on Natalie and James after the week was over. When have I ever spoken to you in any way? When um, have I ever disrespected you? Whoa. Don't speak to me that way. All James said, what came out of his mouth were, whoever you decide to put up, I support your yep. decision. Right. I'll, I'll go ahead and throw myself under the bus on this one. She really wants Victor to stay. Like, literally, you're in an alliance working with us in a final four, and you want Victor to stay? What kind of strategic madness is that? shows me so much. At the end of the week, James stayed true to his word and Victor was evicted for the second time this season. But this didn't last for long though as Victor immediately won another battle back to re-enter the game. Meaning, we have another final seven round to go through. Nicole pretended to be loyal to James and Natalie and was able to convince James to throw the HOH to her, giving her her first taste of physical power since her week one HOH. Nicole targeted Michelle, her biggest enemy in the game left, and convinced Paul to volunteer as a pawn so that she wouldn't need to nominate either of James or Natalie and still have them convinced that she was loyal to them. It was at this time that Nicole, Corey, Paul, and Victor solidified a Final Four deal that Paul was genuinely loyal to. Nicole also ended up winning the veto, not using it, and Nicole was able to break the eviction vote tie to evict Michelle in seventh place. It's, um, strategically, sorry Michelle, I have to vote to evict you. Kisser. I am sorry. And do you guys need to get Nicole? I'm gonna go to final oh. two for sure. I'm only gonna go this to final two if you guys vote me out. Exactly why I voted you out. And Dan Giesling is my cousin-in-law. Bye. <laughs> Bye, me. Why well, you took Pablo? <laughs> Nicole was now in a spot where she and Corey were in the middle of two pairs at the final six, when just two weeks ago, it looked like it was Nicole and Corey versus the rest of the house. Nicole did an extremely good job in both of those final seven rounds and repositioned herself masterfully, with neither side really suspecting that they were getting played by Nicole, and even though it was only two duos that she was playing against, she did an expert job of using the floater strategy to go back and forth between those two sides week after week and still coming out as every one's ally and she wasn't even finished yet Corey keeps paul me and natalie are gonna be next that's what you think yeah they're not gonna target you guys they might target us nobody's talked any game at all at this point we're at the end game coming off of her hoh when she sat back and watched as victor won the final six hoh where he stayed true to his alliance with nicole and Corey and nominated james and natalie Corey came in clutch and won the veto to ensure no funny business would go down, and just like that, Nicole and Corey were not only guaranteed Final Five, but they also had all the power to evict this week. 
Nicole accurately assessed that James would be the much smarter player to keep in, and Natalie was unanimously evicted from the house in sixth place. We need a really dumb game of trusting Nicole and Corey. This is the dumbest game to me. Hey, it is what it is. I'm ready to make some strategic moves. That's the fa my favorite part of this game. It is. You want to make some moves? Mm-hmm. You are? Corey won HOH at the final five, which was the most ideal thing for Nicole's game. As A, this meant that Corey had to get the blood on his hands by turning on Paul and Victor. B, unless James were to win the veto and use it, this meant that Nicole was also guaranteed safety for this round, and this wasn't even an issue as James made a deal to throw the veto to avoid being nominated in the first place. And C, Corey couldn't become the Final Four HOH and would still always be evicted over Nicole at the Final Four, meaning that Nicole was guaranteed to make it to the Final Three. Nicole's positioning was basically perfect at this point, and to put the cherry on top of everything, Nicole won the veto anyways to add another con to her resume and to guarantee that for the third week in a row, herself and Corey had full control over the votes and therefore who would be evicted. They correctly recognized that Victor was the bigger threat, and for the third and final time this season, Victor was evicted. Corey is really set on wanting Victor out of the house. But I feel like Victor and I have a decent relationship. If Corey doesn't marry you, I'll marry you. Okay. I'll stay fit, don't worry. <laughs> I can't handle you guys, bro. <laughs> I can't handle you guys. There's one thing I've learned about Victor. It's that the guy doesn't give up. And I'm not just talking about getting comp wins. The boy's trying to get to Nicole's heart. I'm going to play down with <laughs> Entering the final four, like I said, Nicole was safe no matter what outcome happened. Paul ended up winning both HOH and Veto, and for the first time all season, Nicole was put on the block. Making it all the way to final four without being nominated is a very impressive feat, and the first time that she's nominated, she literally had a 0% chance of going home, which is a testament to how good her positioning and her convincing was for the majority of the season. Nicole made a final two deal with Paul here, knowing that Corey was going to get evicted, and that's exactly what ended up happening. Corey was evicted in fourth place, and before you knew it, it was the final three. Nicole did an excellent job solidifying her final two deal with Paul, while James wasn't doing as well convincing Paul to keep him, so when Paul ended up winning the final HOH, they chose to stay loyal to Nicole over James due to Nicole's work in making Paul feel that they were truly 100% loyal to one another. I'm giving you my word of a final two. Okay. I owe you. I owe you a lifeline. You fought, and you saved my life. So that speaks volumes to me. So, shake my hand. Let's win this game. Yeah, that's good. James, towards the end of this game, I worked really hard, not only for myself, but for both of us. But unfortunately, when I needed you the most, you still went behind my back and tried to make deals with Nicole. So I'm sorry, James, I gotta take Nicole up with me. It's official, James. And now, we're at the final two. This was it. Paul versus Nicole. For me, this was 100% a toss-up, but I was leaning towards Paul being the favorite to win. Both of them did pretty well in the jury questions, but I personally feel that Nicole did slightly better. Although I don't think it changed too much, and I figured Paul was going to take home the win. But as the votes started rolling in, it was close. 1-1. One to one. Then it was 2-2. Two to two. And then it was 3-3. Three to three. Dead even the whole way through. With just three votes left, Paul snagged Bridget's vote, giving them a 4-3 to three advantage and needing just one more vote to win. But Zakia voted for Nicole, tying things back up 4-4. Four to four. One vote left, and it was Devon's. Devon, who had been targeting Nicole in her final weeks in the house. Devon, who had been one of Paul's biggest cheerleaders in the jury house. Julie starts to reveal the vote, and as I'm waiting for Devon's key to be revealed, fully expecting it to say Paul... Congratulations, Nicole! You are the winner of Big Brother! It says Nicole. Just like that, Nicole comes away with a shaky yet fully legitimate 5 to 4 victory over Paul, becoming the winner of Big Brother 18. It might not have been the prettiest showing at times, but there was some very impressive gameplay shown throughout many points of the season that even some of the best BB players haven't proven to be able to accomplish. This isn't to say that Nicole played perfect, though. I mentioned earlier that Nicole's biggest flaw was that she was too loyal to her closest allies and had to be reliant on others to take them out. And while that in itself can be a strategy as it puts you in a safe position, 
regardless of who wins power in certain rounds, she was never going to do it herself and was actively trying to get to the end against Corey, who she had at best only a 50% chance of beating, and it's probably lower than that. But on the flip side, Nicole displayed incredible adaptability throughout the season, as I feel that her style of play shifted dramatically depending on her positioning and her situation. She started off in a majority alliance, then when that quickly crumbled, she played a mini floater game on the Tiffany, Davon, and Frank sides of the Fractured Alliance, but was eventually caught and her game was slightly unraveled. Luckily for her, after she was exposed and Devon started targeting her, she really locked in as a trio with herself, Corey, and Polly, and they seized power and sent Devon quickly out the door. After an odd series of events, Nicole's trio was put into the minority where they then went on to lose their biggest shield in Polly, and when Nicole seemed to be very much at the bottom of the house structure, she made a few key bluffs at the right time in order to maneuver her way back into an ideal structure where she then re-implemented her floater strategy from the beginning of the game, yet this time fixed her flaws and played it phenomenally. She went back and forth between the Paul Victor duo and the Natalie James duo for weeks and did so quite covertly without getting caught, and with both of those duos taking hits, she entered the final four without ever being nominated and in a spot where she was basically guaranteed to make it to final two. Corey took the final hit for her as her shield of the final four, and after weeks of working with Paul, she had convinced them to stay loyal to her and take her to the final two, where she accumulated just enough votes to beat Paul and take home the crown as the winner of Big Brother 18. Am I a Nicole Franzel stan? No. But I feel that Nicole has been way too overhated, and I found myself starting to enjoy Nicole and her style of play much more after working through this, and at the very least, she definitely deserves some BB respect. Many say that she just coasted throughout the entirety of BB-18 and was carried by the likes of Polly and Corey, and then got lucky that Devon wanted a woman to win Big Brother and that's it. Case closed, Paul was robbed. But me? I don't see it like that. I see it as a returning player coming into the game of Big Brother still as a minnow among sharks, but this time she was much more prepared and better equipped. She leveraged her position not as a leader, but as a partner, a number, a cog to be used for the bigger picture, and that let her take control of the endgame and put herself in one of the best positions I have ever seen at the final seven, especially considering that she was on the bottom looking to be two against five just one week prior. Nicole isn't everyone's cup of tea, and I get that, but I think Nicole's BB-18 game deserves a bit more recognition. Nicole had a very unique path to the victory, and she proved that you could be a snake, a rat, undercover, exposed, whatever, and still find a way to move forward in the game. She was never seen as a threat that needed to be evicted, she was never in danger of being sent home, and she masterminded and, dare I say, dominated the endgame. In the end, Paul underestimated Nicole and thought that it didn't matter who they took to the end because they were going to win anyways, and it cost them. Nicole was underestimated throughout a lot of the season. That's why Corey was always nominated over Nicole, and that's why Nicole was always going to be safe when up against the likes of Corey and Polly. She was underestimated in the game, and it cost everyone else the money. At the end of these, I like to give a rating out of 10 on how well I thought their winning game was, and while Nicole's game had a few downs and she got lucky a few times as well, she displayed really impressive levels of gameplay, positioning, basically went the whole season without being nominated, and even told some really effective lies. And maybe I'm a bit high, but I'm going with a 7.5 out of 10 for Nicole, because she really had that end game like 90% locked up against some actually good players, so I think a 7.5 is warranted. Thank you for watching. Huge, huge thanks to Beast1938472829 who had a super wonderful Reddit post that helped me immeasurably with some of the details that weren't in the episodes, since it's not always the easiest to go back and track everything that happened on the feed six years after the fact. So that was super helpful. Thank you. Another special thank you to my YouTube members for supporting me. Without their support, I don't know if I would have it in me to make these huge videos. They're a lot of work. And as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. Frank wants to tell Polly all about the eight pack. And if Frank gives you an idea, you basically have to agree with it. What up, doggy? What up, boys? Damn, son, looking tan. What's a good word? We were all up here one day, but like you weren't up here. It was, you know, me and Corey and Nicole. Group that we've all been hanging out with. Mm -hmm. All the girls were just like, oh, well, let's make an alliance. They called it the eight pack or whatever. <laughs> Stupid as hell. One day after Corey called it eight pack. Shut the eight up. pack. <laughs>
Okay. I kind of like that. I, like I do like eight pack. Oh. <gasps> that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it.